What's up, Forward Family? It's Forward Fabian Big Boss Fabo back with a reaction video for the channel. I'm actually hopping into a Chilling Scares reaction to three allegedly true Cabin in the Woods horror stories. Um, so, yeah, man, let's go ahead and hop straight into this, man. Um, I've done a few reactions to Chilling Scares. Don't really have a specific playlist with his content, but he's very he's a similar narrator to uh, Mr. Nightmare. So if you're a fan of the scary crime type of content, you know, uh, you know, check out his channel. I'll put the link to the original video in the description down below. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and hop into the reaction. This happened back when I was 13 years old. Back then, I had a close friend named Aiden. He was a couple years older than me, but we still got along, mainly because our houses were right next to each other. The rest of our neighborhood was mostly filled with older people, so we didn't really have anyone else to play with. Most nights we'd play random games outside until we got too tired or our parents called us in. This was before the internet was a big deal, so we did this a lot. One of the games we played the most was hide and seek, but a variation where the seeker would have to use a flashlight at all times. The big rule of the game was that the person seeking had to keep it on no matter what, and the person hiding was considered found if they got revealed by the flashlight. It made the game interesting because the hider was better able to know where the seeker was and use it to their advantage when repositioning. But the seeker could just as easily shine their huge circle of light in the hider's direction from a distance, ending the game. We typically set the boundaries That's to the anywhere in the closed parts of the neighborhood. Though our neighborhood was right on the edge of a huge stretch of woods, so sometimes we'd make things interesting by making that the playing area. We never set a limit as to how far the hider could go, because typically we just genuinely didn't want to go that far considering we played the game at night, which admittedly made for a fairly creepy setting. This one time, it was my turn to be the hider. Aiden and I had both agreed to make the woods the playing area for this round. I remember wanting to make it a challenge, so I headed out further than I usually did. That's where you went wrong, right there, this. buddy. It got very dark away from any house lights. There's always that one kid that just wants to do too much, do a little bit extra. I'm going to go out high further than anybody else so they can't find me. It's like you're doing the most, bro. You're just going to make the game worse. You're going to make it longer because you're just wasting time. I'm going to go, you know, it's just like, bro, just keep it cool. Keep it casual, my G. By this point, I couldn't see any lights whatsoever. Considering Aiden had the only flashlight, this made traversing the woods especially difficult. All I had for light was what little was provided by the moon. After I kept walking for a while, I eventually came across an abandoned cabin. I knew this would be the perfect spot. This guy. There was no way I was going to be found in there. Dummy. I stepped inside and fumbled my way around to a set of stairs. I walked up them and came across a bedroom with a single window that somewhat pointed back to my neighborhood, which by this point was way too far away to see anymore. I sat there for a long time. Nothing happened until out of a window I saw Aiden. Only he wasn't using the flashlight, he was cheating. Clearly, he had gotten tired of the flashlight constantly revealing his position, and therefore was either covering it with his hand or had turned it off completely. I watched as his black silhouette walked closer and closer to the cabin. I began to hear leaves crunching under his footsteps as he continued forward. Eventually, he got close enough to where I could no longer see him out of the window, though I could now hear his footsteps from downstairs. Just then, out of the window, I saw the hard dropping sight of Aiden with the flashlight walking around way off in the distance but I could still hear footsteps from downstairs. Slowly, it hit me. Whoever was downstairs wasn't Aiden. Instinctively, I got down and hid underneath a nearby bed. To my horror, the footsteps began slowly walking up the stairs. Mm -hmm. yes, when they got to the top, I could hear the click of a gun. My heart was pounding out of my chest by this point. A few seconds passed when I saw large boots walk into the room that in no way could have been Aiden's. They stood still near the door for what felt like an eternity before turning around and leaving the room. I took this opportunity to get out from under the bed and jump out of the window. <laughs> when I landed and got to my feet, I just started running. I could hear footsteps gaining on me from behind, but I didn't look back. <laughs> Eventually, Aiden saw me running at him and instantly pointed his flashlight on me saying that he could see me and then he won the round. 
But when I didn't stop running, his eyes moved to behind me and the expression on his face instantly faded. He turned and began running with me towards my house. Not long after, we would reach it. We went inside and locked the door behind us. Aiden, now just as shaken up as I was, began questioning what had just happened. Disturbingly, he then asked me who the man was that was running behind me. I still remember getting goosebumps hearing him say this. I proceeded to tell him the whole story from start to finish, and he didn't question a single bit of it. We then told my parents, but did our best to downplay the situation as much as possible, making it seem like it wasn't a big deal so that they wouldn't completely freak out. They ended up calling the cops, who came out to search the cabin and the surrounding area. They searched for multiple hours, but no one was found. From then on, both of our parents didn't allow either of us to go into those woods, and I can't say this was at all disappointing. You couldn't have paid me to go back into those woods. This whole experience was extremely traumatizing, much more for me than Aiden, at least I assume. We've never been back to that cabin, and we both still can't explain who we had seen that night. Mm -hmm. Got him, coach. Hey boss, so I know you're looking to move your employees like me to work from home, but how am I supposed to bring this thing with me? I'm trying to work from home. A few months ago was me and my wife's second anniversary. We both agreed to take some time off of work to do something special. We live in Wyoming and decided on renting out a cabin in the snowy mountains for a few days. Yeah, it wasn't the craziest idea. I ain't gonna lie, the cabin in the woods type of idea, vacation, is not the, it don't really sound that appealing to me. I'm more so, if I'm gonna do the cabins, let's do Aspen, let's go Colorado. You know, let's do, um, let's go skiing, let's go snowboarding, that type of resort-esque type of cabin stay not random nowhere middle of nowhere in the woods that's just not me idea but we thought it'd still be a pretty it. romantic getaway of sorts plus the owner of the now if we do it i gotta be deep and i'm talking about i gotta have like 30 40 people with me we roll deep cabin was a friend of a friend and was willing to give us a discount the cabin itself was in the middle of pretty much nowhere in order to get to it you had to drive down a small removed private road the nearest other house was probably about a mile away. These were details that we didn't exactly know before booking the place. But when we got there, the cabin was too amazing to let it bother us. It looked like it was straight off of a postcard. And in a weird way, the isolation actually made the place more comforting, what with it being surrounded by seemingly endless trees. Though, of course, this meant we didn't have any phone service. We spent the first night next to the fireplace watching a movie I had downloaded on my laptop. When it got a little later, we both decided to end off the night by going hot tubbing, as on the back porch there was a fully operational hot tub Let's that get we couldn't it. help but put to use. Yes, sir. That's when I realized that I'd left my swim trunks in the back of the car parked out front. Now, something that needs to be mentioned is it had been snowing all day. Quite a bit had piled up on the ground by this point. When I walked out front, I quickly noticed a set of fresh boot prints in the snow that clearly weren't made by me or my wife. They walked out from the middle of the forest to one of the living room windows and then right back into the same part of the forest. A couple red flags quickly stood out. At no point in the night did we hear any knocking and the boot prints walked up to the window rather than the door. I told my wife about this and she was a bit more unsettled by the sighting than I was. But I guess to be fair to her, we were in the middle of nowhere. This was a weird occurrence that could be cause for concern. We ultimately decided to drive into a nearby town where we had service and message the owner to ask him if one of his friends had stopped by the cabin or if he was expecting anyone to show up that night. We got into town and sent him a text along those lines. We waited for 30 minutes but got no response, which I guess was fair because it was pretty late by that point. We could have called him, but again it was late so we just decided to head back to the cabin and try and forget about it. We figured it's possible we were just blowing the whole situation out of proportion anyway. And we were planning on going into town tomorrow morning, so we figured maybe we'd get a response by then. When we got back to the cabin, neither of us were willing to sit outside in the hot tub anymore. We ended up just going to bed. We were both tired from the whole day anyway, so we quickly fell asleep. Fast forward to 3am and I woke up. But I was pretty confused as to what woke me up, because I'm typically a really deep sleeper. That's when I heard a slight bump on the bedroom window. The curtains were closed, so I couldn't see what produced the sound. 
I figured it must have been a piece of snow falling on the glass. Yeah, that's so a I piece brushed of it off and tried to fall back asleep. But only a few seconds later, the sound came again, this time a bit louder. I was now a little concerned, so I got up out of bed to prove to myself that it was nothing to worry about. I opened the curtains. I couldn't see anything. I turned on the flashlight on my phone to get a better look. But this left a huge glare on the window, so I had to open it in order to see anything. This guy. Right as I did, I noticed fresh boot prints in the snow right under the window. Inside, I was beginning to panic. I lifted my flashlight up and out towards the trees, following the retreating boot prints. That's when I realized they led straight to a figure just standing there in the snow, looking at me from maybe 10 yards out. Hello. I closed the window and tried to stay as calm as I could. I woke up my wife and told her that we had to leave right now. Naturally, she was confused and asked me why, but I avoided the question as I knew answering it would only further scare her. I told her to quickly pack up her things, and thankfully she complied with no further questions. A few minutes later and we had all of our stuff at the front door packed and ready to go. I opened the door and we both sprinted towards the car. When we got in, I started it and began reversing out of the driveway when my wife screamed. My head shot back to where she was looking, and there again was the figure this time right next to the house watching us leave. Hello. I pushed harder on the gas pedal and started speeding down the private road. Once we got cell phone service, we sent over a text to the owner of the cabin explaining the whole situation. Later that morning, we would get a text back from the guy saying that he went to the cabin to investigate and there were indeed boot prints, but all around the building. He explained how the boot prints had stopped at every window. We didn't really know what to make of this information. Like, it was definitely terrifying to you weirdo! Home, but the whole situation was basically out of our hands now. We obviously cut our whole trip short. We ended up spending the rest of our days off of work at home. We still don't know who that figure was, or what he was trying to do that night. But we're not entirely sure we even want to know the answers to these questions. As far as we know, nothing else ever happened, and nothing further came of the whole situation. When I got to ASU, okay, I met okay. Professor Lindy. She's one of the first women hey, to ever Hey, at least she didn't get physical, you hear me? At least she didn't get violent. There's one night in my life that I'll never forget. I was about a week away from turning 18 years old. It was a warm, late summer night. If I had to give an estimate, it was probably around 2 a.m. I was with two other friends, who I'll just refer to as Jacob and Steven. We were all hanging out in Steven's basement, doing stuff we probably shouldn't have been doing at our age. What, smoking dope? But we got bored of that pretty quickly, and decided to go outside to find something better to do. Jacob said he knew of a spot where other teenagers would often hang out. It was next to a small lake, deep in a forest that we lived next to. We grabbed a few old flashlights and started walking. It took a while to get there, but when we did, we were disappointed to discover no one else was there. According to Jacob, this was a hot spot for teenagers, especially at this time of the night. But I guess we just got unlucky. Now even more bored than ever, we decided to walk around the lake to see if we could find anyone. When we got to the other side, we noticed there was an old, abandoned looking cabin. Of course, we all wanted to explore it, so that's exactly what we started doing. I won't lie, we were making a lot of noise. Eventually, we went to the upstairs floor of the cabin and found ourselves in a small bedroom filled with a lot of different stuff lying around, all old and covered in dust. We were all kind of sorting through the different items when suddenly we heard the wooden door to the cabin creak open. Uh -huh. All three of our heads shot up looking at each other. We stood there completely still holding our breaths. That's when we heard slight footsteps moving around downstairs. Then a man's voice. I know you're up there. Yeah. Uh -huh. It sounded like an older man. Hell no. Just from the way he said it, I remember being genuinely fearful of my life as I stood there, still frozen. Jacob, coming to the reality of the situation, gestured us towards a small closet in the corner of the room. We shut the door as quietly as we could, and all squished together in this tiny closet. Why would you do that? We heard footsteps climb the stairs and reach the entrance of the room. I can hear you. Mm. We remained dead still. Not moving a muscle, the man began sifting through stuff around the room. Then, the door knob to the closet slowly started opening. The door swung open. 
Steven was in the front and reacted the fastest by pushing the man to the ground. <laughs> we all ran as fast as we could out of the room, down the stairs, and out of the cabin. From there, we just kept going. We didn't stop until we reached Steven's house. I can hear you. We went back into his basement and took a good five or ten minutes just to catch our breaths. We I know you're in there. What we had just heard and seen. That's when Steven explained that when he shoved the man, he saw him drop a small handgun on the ground. We didn't sleep that night. We pretty much just sat there in shock the whole time. We concluded that there's no way that man lived there. The place was no doubt completely abandoned. I mean, if you saw it, you'd think the same thing. We don't know where he came from, and we don't know what he looked like, as none of us got a good enough look at him. The three of us are still good friends to this day, but ever since this experience, we've never been back to that area of the forest for obvious reasons. Even today, I still think about what would have happened if Steven didn't push the man to the ground when that closet door was opened. I know you're up there. I can hear you. <laughs> Why you sound like that? All right, y'all. There, right there's three allegedly true cabin in the woods horror stories, man. Let me know y'all's thoughts on that one in the comment section below. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, forward Fabian. It's the road to a million subscribers, man. I do got a similar playlist to, you know, like I said, he like Mr. Nightmares to me, chilling scared. So I do have a Mr. Nightmare playlist. Check that out. Um, check out everything I got going on on the playlist page. Check out my library of content. Check out everything I got going on in the description down below. Catch you guys in the next video. We out.